Hey guys, welcome back. So today we're gonna talk about the sniper and I believe the sniper is a really strong unit right now in the current meta. I've been using it a lot and I've been winning a lot with this unit. And what goes very well with the sniper? It is the war dog. The reason why the war dog is a really good unit with a sniper is because it's a fast moving scouting unit and it's also very tanky. So the war dog can tank many hits for your sniper while, while your sniper stays in the back and fires away into your opponent's infantry units. So that's why I always like to start off with a war dog and then build a sniper later on. And why is the sniper so good right now? It's because a lot of players, like in this case you see, they, they like going for the double harvesters with the meta slowing down and also war factor units getting, you know, massive nerfs. You know, there's a lot of players right now going for double harvesters, going for expensive tech lab units or orca bombers, and also building a lot of infantry units. So the meta has definitely shifted away from war factory units and into more of a mixed composition with infantry, air, and tech lab units as well. So predictably, my opponent here goes for missile squads because he sees war dogs, he sees pit bulls. And this is a map where the crystals are actually quite close to the center. So going for an early double harvester without really scouting what your opponent's going for is not a good idea. And I definitely want to take advantage of this. The fact that he went for early double harvesters here. So I go for double pit pulls. I don't go for the sniper right away because I know his missile squads aren't going to be a threat yet. His harvester is almost dead. And I'm also doing an awesome job at keeping his harvester from farming those crystals. Because of course, I don't have to kill the harvester right away. It's just the fact that I'm not letting his second harvester farm right now. I go for my own missile squad here because I really wanted to kill the harvester, but my pit bull actually does enough damage and it does survive long yes. enough to kill oh one of those harvesters. So it was good enough at this point, and I'm gonna speed it up again once again. He's got a whole bunch of missile squads now on the battlefield, and this is what usually happens when you send out pit bulls. So I go for snipers, and I also have strong arms minigun turrets, so I've got a lot of anti-infantry, um, you know units here as well and I do end up killing a second harvester with the help of my missile squad and my sniper starts firing away and he goes actually for a shockwave which kind of surprised me a little bit but I mean it shouldn't have been too surprising he ends up miss microing his shockwave here attack my pit bull and it gets taken out really easily with uh, my sniper now I go for a war dog here I get the first missile he goes for many uh, much more uh, shockwaves here of course which are his earliest and best counters to my sniper and I'm just towel blocking him here with my faster pit bull. He goes for one iron cannon and I move away my sniper. He kills my two weakened units which I was okay with and he goes for another harvester here. While I keep harassing him continuously here, he really wants to build the expensive orca bomber or the zone trooper or titan. That's what he's trying to do and that's why he constantly goes for these double harvesters. Now with my double pit bulls, I block his shockwave. Unfortunately, I wasn't really watching here, so I had to do a step back with my sniper here because uh, I wasn't just doing, I was just not really paying attention to my sniper at this phase of the game. But as long as you keep microing away with your snipers, you can safely fire away. Um, but I just let his iron cannon kill my weakened units there. I didn't really care about saving them because I had so many crystals anyways that I could uh, replace units quickly, very, very fast. And he still has a whole bunch of infantry units, as you guys can see. Because if you look at his army composition, he only has missile squads and shockwaves for his early defense. And he needs to build an air tower if he wants to build some air units here. But of course, Orca Bombers are going to be the best answer in this case. He just continuously goes for double harvesters. He finally gets an Orca Bomber up here. And I wasn't really expecting this necessarily because I thought he was going to go for a tech lab at some point and he just bombs away kills both of my sniper units helps me kill one of his harvesters that were already weakened and the pitbull goes down I go for a hammerhead immediately I had so much money in this game because I was killing a lot of his harvesters so I really didn't care too much about like how many of my units died and at this point the missile is almost done I knew he was going to go for another orca bomber so you know I kept my hammerhead here and uh, with my snipers, my snipers would support my hammerhead in killing his missile squads while my hammerhead of course took down his work of bombers here. And he just starts spamming a whole bunch of infantry units here because he just wanted to rush them onto the launch pad. But at this point, the game was pretty much over. So as long as you keep your snipers safe, they will fire away and kill all those infantry units that are trying to come and get you. Um, so as you guys can see, my snipers did a lot of work in this game by killing so many of his infantry units which were primary which were the primary defense units for this opponent here who was trying to go for tech labs and expensive orca bombers 
All right, guys, this will be the second game. Once again, my opponent will be playing as Commander Solomon. Now with the snipers, in my opinion, the best commander is Strong Arm. I like using Strong Arm the best just because her minigun turret um, can also be kind of like a defensive unit that you can place next to your sniper if you need to. But anyways, my opponent here actually goes for a Shockwave Missile Squad Rush without a Harvester. And there's two ways this can go. So he can either attack my base with a Shockwave or he can kill, try to kill my Harvester. That's usually what this means when you see a shockwave and a missile squad. And it looks like he's going for my harvester instead. And of course, my best anti-infantry unit here is going to be the sniper. So I build a sniper, and he probably didn't expect my sniper because there aren't a lot of players using the snipers, right? So I start firing away at his shockwave. I could have microed and backed away with my sniper, but I was pretty confident that shockwave was going to die soon anyways. I go for double snipers here, and I start sniping his missile squad. At this point, he's actually going for a double harvester, which I had no idea. I thought he might have had a, had a single harvester, but I'm surprised he had enough crystals for two harvesters here after you know not succeeding in that rush. He builds more shockwaves here to try to counter my sniper. I get the first missile here. Um, unfortunately, I failed to kind of tile block him there, taking some damage to my uh, snipers here. And I missed micro here because I was supposed to fire at, at that shockwave, but I was starting to. I my snipers were attacking his harvesters for some reason, and I put my I tucked my sniper in this nice corner behind the rock in his harvester. So it's kind of like it, it was pretty nice uh, on where my sniper was positioned here at behind the rocks because I just had to protect my uh, sniper from moving my pit bull back and forth on these two tiles. As you guys can see right now, his shockwave trying to get to it, but with my pit bull micro. He won't be able to get there fast enough. So my sniper will fire away safely from distance and take out that shockwave. So finding nice positions like this to snipe from is very important. Um, because of course you want to protect your sniper unit. But at this point he's got a Wolverine. And my sniper was almost dead. So I was like hey you know what I'll let it go. I start build building some tanks. Because tanks are relatively beefy and they're good against wolverines and shockwaves as well um, he goes for one ion cannon here thinking that he could kill both of my tanks but he totally miscalculated that so he only ended up killing a sniper and i kill his wolverine i get three units on the launch pad with my two beefy tanks and a war dog at this point he just couldn't get to the late game as i was just harassing him so much in the early game and he also failed his rush so you know that cost him quite a bit there but there we go guys some more good sniper action once again you know putting snipers in a nice position like behind the rocks is a is a good idea the only thing you have to keep in mind is snipers can't fire through the rocks so sometimes it can be sort of like an impairment as well this will be the third and final game we'll take a look at against my opponent here using colonel jackson so I'm going to start off with a standard Harvester opening and once again of course with my early scouting unit the War Dog. I want to see what my, my opponent's going for. He could possibly go for a double Harvester but this is a map where it's pretty risky to go for double Harvesters because you can easily kill Harvesters in this game in this type of map where there aren't many natural barriers or rocks to protect your units with. But he goes for double Missile Squads here and I see exactly what he's doing. And his unit levels are fairly high. And I also see that his commander levels levels about, you know, 11. So I'm thinking, okay, this guy's probably going to have some high-level units, which uh, may be quite difficult to deal with. But the great thing about snipers, even though my sniper is only at, like, level 7, and he actually ends up rushing down a level 10 machine gun squad onto the right-hand launch pad. And he has, he has a scary-looking level 12 shocks as well. But the great thing about snipers is that they can fire two tiles away. And of course, you need to use that as your advantage. And you never want to let these shocks get close to snipers anyways, regardless of what their level is. So even though my even though his shocks are at level 12, I protected my protect my snipers very well with my war dogs. And I try to kill that machine gun squad, but he starts focusing and he starts firing my sniper here first. So his machine gun actually end up clearing out my snipers. But he constantly tries to throw me his uh, shock waves and those machine gun squads, but um, I'm just doing so well with my sniper micro and my war dog micro. His shock wave gets a little bit close here, but um, I do end up taking it out in time here before he does significant amount of damage. So even though his infantry units are pretty scary in terms of the level, you can always, of course, abuse your two tile range, which you should be doing in most cases with a sniper, and that's what I do here, and I end up taking control of the launch pads but his boosted shockwave 
Um, starts clearing out my snipers here, and uh, my war dogs just don't get there fast enough. I could have definitely done a better job at microing, but he does clear out all my sniper teams here with his shockwaves. But it, it must be very annoying to play as the other player that's facing against snipers because, of course, um, if if I can protect my snipers so well, like in this case, it'll be very difficult to take out those snipers that are standing in the back. So he starts going for talents because he he's at this point he's like okay you know what screw it I'm gonna go for the ultimate counter which are talents and because his talents are two levels higher than my pitbull my pitbull just can't kill it fast enough and his talents actually do a lot of damage to my snipers he he does take out most of the snipers here and once again all my snipers end up dying so I keep trying to build snipers and pitbulls my pitbulls going for talents his snipers my snipers going for missile squads uh, but once again. My snipers being only at level 7, they have an incredibly low amount of health compared to his units. So his talents, you know, quickly take out my snipers before they can do um, any significant damage here. He ends up going for Wolverines here. He switches up the tech uh, because Wolverines are very beefy. And level 11 Wolverines, they're not going to go down to pit bulls that fast anyways either. So he clears out those snipers with his Wolverines. I go for tanks immediately. Missile's almost done here, so I'm like, okay, I gotta capture this missile before this game goes too crazy because he has zone troopers as well. And at this point, his zone troopers are going to be a huge problem. And he gets out those uh, zone troopers here, and the missile's almost done. He, he boosts his zone troopers up, but I tile block him. And because uh, my tanks are so beefy with the large amount of health, um, I end up capturing the missile in time and win the game. So this, this game right here was a great example of how you should always be using the sniper um, as you guys can see the snipers if they are standing behind a unit or being protected they can kill all sorts of infantry units regardless of the level so this is how you should be really using it you need to know how to micro away with your snipers and you need to know how to use units like the war dog or pit bulls to guard in front so your opponents don't get close to your snipers and of course kill it in close quarters but anyways let me know what you guys think about the snipers i think it's a fantastic unit and it's definitely coming back into the meta because there we are seeing a whole bunch of infantry units starting to come into play once again but uh, i hope you guys enjoyed this video and i'll see you guys next time